Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you for allowing me to discuss with you this evening your recently passed ordinance 2016-102 and the long-term ramifications it will have on this great community we call home, Loveland. If you look at the walls, you can see all the pictures adorning the walls of what Loveland used to be. We've certainly come a long way since then. This is in part due to the river, the bike trail, our parks, our school system, all the wonderful amenities downtown offers and special events. This ordinance cuts right to the heart of these wonderful events in the city. Special events add charm and uniqueness to our town. The Amazing Race, Homecoming Parade, Seth Mitchell Memorial Run to memorialize a fallen war hero, concerts in the park, Loveland Art Show, and Loveland Farmers Market are put on by volunteers, volunteer groups, or nonprofit organizations that just cannot afford these fees. They put these events on because they care about the event, have a passion to make it successful, and offer something to the community in various ways. The ordinance seems to be for two purposes. One, to eliminate or reduce special events, and two, to raise funds to offset the loss the city occurred on its two events in 2016, July 4th Parade and Festival and Christmas in Loveland, which the city lost nearly $20,000 on. One has to ask why the city wants to do this just to say they own the events. After last year's fiasco over the Beautification Committee and the Farmer's Market, I thought we were done with political egos. But it's a new year and yet another challenge we face again thanks to the majority on council. It appears transparency and love on government has gone away. I have here many emails between the majority of council when Mrs. Cox, Mrs. Sattel, Mrs. Gross, and Mr. Fitzgerald were discussing city business and making decisions for the city that the rest of council were not a part of. Prior to Mrs. Cox's resignation, the majority of council has had discussions about special events since 2014. Here is one from January 22, 2014, Mr. Fitzgerald emailed to Mrs. Stell, Ms. Gross, and Mrs. Cox, quote, I like having sanctioned events whereby we absorb in-kind costs, not just administrative, but real work by public works, fire department, police department. These would be things like Vets Day, Independence Day, all other things like pub crawl, and yes, even American Sh Amazing Charity Race would have to pay these fees direct. I think the idea of administrative charge is BS. The office staff tasking, tasked with dealing with these things are there and being paid anyway, end of quote. Fast forward to December 29th, 2015. Mrs. Cox emails to Ms. Sattel, Gross, and Mr. Fitzgerald, quote, be careful what you ask for when it comes to special events. If you recall, city staff's recommendation, according to Misty, was special events be eliminated or would not have any city involvement. While that may make Mr. Canada happy, it won't get as many people into town. I personally feel council should approve which events they want the city to sponsor, money and personnel, and increase fees of all other events. Closing roads should be very limited, too. End of quote. Mrs. Gross replied to the three, I agree with Linda. I'm thinking signature events, the city sponsors money and personnel, are amazing race, although I think they pay for everything, Christmas in Loveland, 4th of July, Seth Mitchell Run. All others pay fees and costs the city incurs as a result of the event. People are coming into our city for many reasons now, so we don't need a bunch of events. Agree with Linda on road closures. End of quote. From Mrs. Sattel to Mrs. Cox, Ms. Gross, and Mr. Fitzgerald, December 28, 2015. Quote, need to institute vendor permits need to look at special events and what is considered a special event that is supported by the city. All other need to start paying their way. We don't need special event every week, need to be more discriminating. This fits in with reviewing fees as we just done with impact fees, end of quote. Dave, you're uh, at your five minutes. Uh... If I don't finish, the person behind me will finish. Oh, that's fine. I mean, that's fine. I, I just need to keep, keep moving okay. along. So, I'm uh, Missy, see how, how close am I to the five? 20 seconds. Okay, continue. You can, you can have an extra 10. Okay. Mrs. From Mrs. Cox to, to Mr. Tell Gross and Mr. Fitzgerald, 
November 2nd, 2015, regarding the future of the farmer's market. Quote, Donna hopes to move the farmer's market back to downtown, and she's promoting voting tomorrow. I wonder why. End of quote. And my favorite reply from Mrs. Gross to the group about the future of the farmer's market, quote, the market is never coming back downtown. Guess we'll see how election days grow. End of quote. As you can see, the majority of this council has been talking among themselves about this issue for some time, developing a strategy of how to implement the fees and policies. What does this mean to Loveland? If we continue, we have less events, the, amaz the future of the amazing race, Seth Mitchell run, homecoming parade, farmer's market, to name a few, are in jeopardy. All these events give Loveland its unique identity and make it what it is today. These events bring thousands of people to shop in our great town and support our business community. The Amazing Race attracts over 3,000 people on race day. The Farmer's Market averages 750 people each market. Free advertising that brings people into Loveland. Okay, Dave, I think I've been done with your time, but yeah, you can continue with the next one. That's, that's why we just need to limit it to five minutes for each. Uh, thank you. are also 515 Lowell. And yes, sir. So is yours. Hello. I will finish what my husband has said. The farmer's market, for example, was created in the Code of Ordinances under 717-01 location. Terms and conditions was further defined under 1165.7 farmer's market and under 1141.01 purpose. So with that in mind, you would have to say that the farmer's market is a city-supported event and is exempted from Ordinance 2016-102, as well as the table vendor fee ordinance in front of you. The same thought applies to the aforementioned events. Therefore, Ordinance 2016-102 should be repealed and rescinded because when you start making exceptions for the farmer's market to the rule, then the rule has no real use. The decisions ahead of this council tonight are painful, controversial, and heartfelt, could be very unpopular in an election year, and could change the future of this community. Believe me when he says he feels your pain, but he didn't cause this issue. Those of you sitting here at the table, and you know who you are, have caused this. He trusts that you will do the right thing this evening and rescind and repeal 102 and the table vendor fee ordinance. He's counting on you to do the right thing. Now, I also signed up. Last two weeks ago at the meeting, oh, excuse me, I'm Donna Bednar. I am the founder and the past director of a Love and Farmers Market. Um, thank you. I'm glad I gave it up. Um, I have gone through this with the city for two years. This would have been the third year, and I'm not sure I would have been able to go through another time. Where I've got a concern is the fees and what the city is proposing. Um, there was a comment made by a council member last two weeks ago that the market incurred, or the city incurred $3,000 last year in fees uh, or in expenses for the market. I paid for the lease. It was minuscule, but I paid for the lease. I paid for the electric. The police, I was required, according to the lease, to have police coverage at $35 an hour, three hours minimum. I paid $500 for police coverage, which did nothing to help traffic flow. There wasn't a problem, okay? Um, so my concern is if I expensed the city $3,000 last year, I don't know where that is. If it comes from putting in electric at McCoy, now Cox Park, or parking lot, um, on the poles, Excuse me, but there's going to be other, there are other events held there. The market can't be held for that. Um, I have a volunteer, or I've had a volunteer base. I have never taken a salary in six years of the market. Um, neither has anyone else. I have, have had 30 volunteers, which is more volunteers, probably three times the volunteers than any other market in the city of Cincinnati has. This was the largest suburban market in the city prior to two years ago when the city decided that the market could not return to Jackson Street Market. We went to the bowling alley, and then there was a fight last year to get us back into historic Loveland, which we did. We are now, this year, these fees are going to 
prohibit the market from returning. Why should the market pay a $1,500 application fee, which the way the ordinance is written, if it's not accepted, is not refundable? And this doesn't even go for the market people. This goes for every event. So why would anybody want to come to our town? You know, people have said they have lived here for so many years. I've lived here for 38 years. I love this town. That is why I formed Farmer's Market, because I thought it would be a really cool venue to get people together to support things. We've not only supported an event in historic Loveland, but we've supported sustainability of farmers, which today is at a major, major loss across the country of both acreage and the farming industry, which is a real severe threat to all of us. So, you know what? Loveland has been one of the lowest market fees in the area, and we've kept it that way because we've tried to, to, to attract, you know, the best vendors, which we have, and now this is all up in the air because if this goes through and is put, you know, put through and, and goes, there's not going to be a market in Loveland. It's probably going to move. And while I am still an advisor to this group, I am not responsible. But thankfully, when I decided to give it up, eight people came forward, the volunteers of the market, and said, yes, we believe in this. We want it to return. And now this is what we've come to. Thank you, Donna. Uh,